my name is George Johnston. I'm on the board of directors of the Superstition Mountain Museum, and I'd like to welcome you to our museum, and I think you'll enjoy it. All I want to do now is to take you on a quick trip around the place, and you can come back today, tomorrow, anytime you like, and as often as you like. We start our tour of the museum and its grounds by coming in on the property, and on your right-hand side, you will see a garden that was prepared by the Blue Star Organization, which is a monument to the memory of all servicemen and women who have served in any of our uh, military forces. So from there, we walk over to the museum building proper. As you enter the building, you come into the guest shop and bookstore, and uh, you'll find many delights. That has to do almost exclusively with the Superstition Mountains and their history, starting way back from uh, geological times right on up to the present times and what will be the future. As you enter this gift shop on your right-hand side, you'll find a section of books. We have almost 300 titles. They have to do with the mountains, with what's taking place here in history, in uh, architecture, uh, food, native peoples, visitors, and you'll have a good time in the museum itself as you enter on the right-hand side and go into the gallery. This is our number one A gallery. On your right-hand side as you go in, you will find an exhibition of minerals, beautiful minerals, specimens that are all native to the state of Arizona, many to the superstitions themselves. As you proceed through that room, or opposite of that mineral display, you will see an alcove, which contains representatives of practically all animal life that exists in the museum. And we have them all, except for a live javelina. We're very proud of our animals, and we take good care of them. We take good care of them here, as well as in, the, in their native situation. As you proceed through this main gallery uh, hall, and the next alcove you come to will be on your right-hand side, and that is a specific display of the early cultures that existed in this land as far back as 6,000 years ago. Now you'll find stories of the Salado and the Hohokam, were the two prime groups that lived here separately. They were not large tribes, they were like families, but they occupied this entire area. A very difficult place to live, very, very usable pottery to beautiful design uh, graphic pottery, some of the finest in the world. As we go on down the gallery, you can look on your left-hand side and you'll see a ranching exhibit. And uh, then we come in to another area, which is a representation of an important part of Arizona history, known as the Buffalo Soldiers period. The Buffalo Soldiers were African-American troops, were your freed men, and they volunteered into the service. They were called Buffalo Soldiers by the Indians. There are several reasons given, but the reason we find out as we delved into the history of it, working with the regiment, as they call it, which is a supportive group of the old history, is that they were fearless, as the Buffalo was fearless. And we have a nice display showing them in their uniforms, their dress uniforms of the day, now we come into an area that's totally different. It is devoted mostly to the story of the Lost Dutchman gold mine, which is a, a legendary tale based on a lot of fact, legends, a lot of lore, a lot of mystery, a lot of non-answered questions, and no one has ever found the Lost Dutchman's gold mine, and they're looking for it to this day. Since 1881, when the Dutchman, Jacob Waltz, died, at his deathbed he gave out some information that would lead no one has ever found it. No one has ever secured it. Then you come to the end of this main corner and you take a left-hand turn, and in front of you on the facing wall you'll see a wonderful exhibit of de Grazia paintings, etchings, drawings that he did. He was a very, very popular artist with the native peoples here. We are very fortunate to have a large gallery with most of his major work, but in the gallery where you'll find original artwork, original rugs, some original Indian art, we ask that you do not use flash. And so we'll proceed from the gallery and on the left-hand side as you walk down back toward the front of the museum, you will see a series of small alcoves. Uh, one has to do with finance, statistical, uh, all done in period pieces. Then you'll find a assay office. You'll find another alcove that talks about early printing in the early newspapers, about uh, Paxaw Tan, who was an outlaw who waylaid the stagecoaches after the Apache Trail was never harmed a person in his life and was thought to be more of a legend than a fact. And then we come to one of our finest exhibits, we think, that celebrates a place known as Apache Land. Apache Land existed on our mountain, on the south side of it, only about 11 miles from here, 
no longer exists. It burned down twice in its history. It was started in 55. It burned down the first time, 1960, the year that Elvis Presley made his film here called Charo. Both the chapel is open, you walk in. Those are our outdoor exhibits. There's no charge to go in any of those buildings to see any of those things. You'll also find, as you come out of the chapel, the big, the big old barn. The old barn is up now again and contains another museum, almost strictly of Apache land. But we also show a lot of old, old uh, equipment, uh, saddles, bridles, spurs, and also pictures of about 225 actors and actresses who appeared in movies in Apache land. By now you've seen most of our major exhibits inside and outside, but you can proceed on up the hill and you come to a new exhibit. As we leave the big barn, we go right through the barn, we come out the other end and there's a hill in front of us, a slight grade, not, a, not an important hill, where you go by the model railroad itself and you can stop there as long as you like. It is what they call a number eight scale. The um, new model railroad really has a theme and the theme of the five C's of Arizona, which are copper, cattle, cotton, citrus and climate. And when you've seen what you want to see, continue on up that hill and you'll go by a building. There's our archive and our workshops. You'll note that everything is done in the old style of the 1880s, 1870s. With, and you will go by that and you come upon quite an interesting looking machine which is known as a stamp mill. The stamp mill was of its day the best you could do to reduce gold ore down to gold. Instead of using a sledgehammer and a pickaxe and doing it the hard way and using a lot of dynamite, the stamp mill changed that entire process across the United States and across the world. The idea of milling it the way it is milled on that stamp machine came from the Mexican miners who got it from the Spanish called an aristra. And all an aristra does is taking one rock and laying it on top of another rock or several rocks of ore and crushing it so they reduce that ore down to cereal type material. By now you've made pretty much of a circular tour around the museum's grounds. The 15 acres, which is a large campus for a museum our size, it's a large campus for any museum, and it has probably, from the property itself and from the buildings on the property, the most magnificent view of what's called the west wall of the Superstition Mountain, which is a absolutely perpendicular cliff that rises off the desert floor about 2,000 feet and it extends about three, four miles in one direction. But here we are again. I hope you've just completed a successful trip and had a good time. And we hope you will come back and see us again as often as you can, as often as you like. And you'll always be very welcome on our premises.